I want to talk about two um, neglected um, Christian practices um, which I think are affecting um, a lot of the a lot of the Christians um, inf impact in general uh, this is my little buddy Micah um, he is um, about to be 11 months in a few days um, Traditionally, Christians have, have, have sought guidance through through the scriptures and, and through prayer, but in recent in recent years, it seems like these two things are kind of almost ignored as as, as not important. Um, and, and so I I want to I want to talk about them just just for just for a little bit today, um, because in today's culture we have a we have a Christian church or people who call themselves Christians who don't really know um, what they're talking about. I'm 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 astounded by the amount of Christians who, when it comes to topics like homosexuality, abortion, alcohol, they are completely illiterate as to what science says and what the Bible says because they just turn off their brain and they believe something literally out of blind faith for no good reason. And uh, so I want to I want to really encourage you today to uh, stay in the Word and to stay in prayer. So why don't I understand the Bible? The most common issue I see with, with people not understanding the Bible is the translation that they're using. Um, sometimes, you know, we, we, we make it too complicated, like King James only and all this nonsense. The Bible wasn't written in English. It was written in, in, a, in a form of Greek called Koine, which basically means commoner's Greek, okay? And it's been translated into many different languages throughout, you know, time. Um, it, I shouldn't say the Bible was written in Greek. The New Testament was written in, in Greek. And there was a, a version of the Old Testament called the Septuagint, which was also written in Greek. But basically, what that means for us today is, you know, find a translation of English that you actually understand. Unless you want to take the time to learn Koine Greek, um, which is kind of a timely process, um, it, it seems best to just, you know, maybe get a translation that you understand. Um, the NIV was recently bought out um, in 2000-something, and um, they released a, a new version of the NIV Bible, and it, it was copyrighted in 2011. Um, really, a, a really good translation. It's really easy to understand. Um, the ESV is good if you if you are a grad student and you you know have that academic uh, mind. Um, NASB is good, a little bit um, easier for I think maybe the older people to understand than the younger people, but still good. Um, NLT is, is what's called a, a thought for thought rather than a word for word. What that means is there are some translations which try to translate precisely what the original manuscript says. But then there's others who just try to show um, the idea of what's being said. And the NLT does that. It doesn't try to say exactly what Paul and Jesus were originally saying. It tries to say it in a way that you'll understand. Um, the message does that as well. Um, but check out the NLT. Um, check out the NIV if you want more more precise. Try the ESV, but it's going to be a little bit harder to understand, a little bit um, bigger words and stuff. Um, another reason why you may have problems understanding the Bible is new concepts. You know, we get saved or whatever, and we get involved in a church, or maybe we don't. And it starts talking about these concepts that we're just very unfamiliar with. Um, we're just not sure what it's talking about because we, we don't really know much about it. Or maybe our church uh, is real strong on doctrine um, over knowing where the doctrine comes from. You know, and so for that, um, for that, uh, and, uh, you just have to keep studying in the con until the concepts become more familiar. And you allow yourself to be changed. You allow the way you're thinking about it to be changed. Um, another reason is not studying. Simply not um, not reading the word is, is a big a big issue. Well, I try reading it. I can never follow it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. As you stay in the word, um, it will it will start to make more sense. It will you know you'll start to understand what's what's being said. You'll start to understand its purpose. For instance, if, if I talk to a lot of Christians nowadays about why what's Genesis the purpose of Genesis. Most of them wouldn't be able to answer. How does Leviticus still apply to us today? Most of them wouldn't be able to answer. Because these are things that, that, that Christians just have stopped studying. And they literally don't know what they believe or why they believe it. Um, and, and they don't think necessarily that they should. Um, they're just okay with the status quo. Uh, and as a result, I mean, the Christian, uh, the Christian church is becoming very inefficient or irrelevant, I should say, to the, to the, uh, to the society at large. 
but also being sidetracked. Sometimes when we go to scripture, our, 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 we'll be thinking about something else or, or maybe not really paying attention to what we're reading. Big cause right there. Um, you know, so just slow down and actually think about what you're reading. Stop and reread it if you have to. Kind of see the context of what's being, what's going on. So that takes us to the next idea. Why read the Bible? Uh, life guidance. The Bible has a lot to say about how to conduct your life. And, for instance, Proverbs. Oh, there you go, buddy. Proverbs talks a lot about, you know, how to properly handle things and how to handle your finances and stuff and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, uh, really gives a lot of life guidance. Um, Ecclesiastes warns of the danger of um, wisdom without discretion. Um, you know, just Job tells us, you know, what's the purpose of life and all these different things. Um, so first off is life guidance, but second off, spiritual growth. Um, if you want to grow as a Christian, really there is no substitute to prayer and the Word. There is really no substitute to it. Um, and we'll get to prayer in a minute, but um, it's like this last point says here. When you don't know what the word says, you just start making stuff up, like cleanliness is next to godliness. Well, I can kind of see that one because in the book of Leviticus it says this is unclean, this is clean. But that's not really what it's talking about. But once again, Christians won't know that if they're not reading it. So once again, when you don't read the Bible, you just start making stuff up. Oh, I believe this. Why do you believe that? Well, because I think that it sounds right. Our way of thinking usually gets us in trouble. You know, we have pride and we have all this different stuff. But with the Bible, it helps us to understand um, understand our, our, our character flaws, the things that we're overlooking. Um, so that brings us to our third point on why I read the Bible. Fresh perspective gets a little bit of something else in us. The same as when we go and hear a sermon from somebody, we get that, that, that fresh take on something that, that, that maybe we didn't understand before. Um, for instance, um, um, my pastor last um, Sunday preached a message that was so refreshing for me. It was basically don't not living in, in the golden years, you know, oh, back in the good old days or back when I lived here, I was content. Always on the search for that thing that made you happy. The search for the old pastor that you knew, the, ser the search for the old uh, church that, that, that was the perfect church and the, the search for, for, the pla and for this place that's the perfect place to live, the perfect job, the search for that, that golden years I, mentality. Um, and it was something that even though I studied the scriptures, I, I completely overlooked. I, I, I didn't even think about it before. So it gives us fresh perspective on things that, that um, we are oftentimes even blinded to. So um, <clears throat> reading the Bible. First off, there's a few things to take note of. The, the, the first of these three points that I want to talk about, which I'll talk again. I'm, I'm actually working on a, on a video series that will, ex that will kind of help you to understand the Bible. Um, but the first thing to look at is the literary genre. What type of literature is it? For instance, is it historical narrative like Genesis? In which case, you have to realize that the history is was recorded for a reason, for a purpose. Um, is it apocalyptic like the book of Revelations? Is it prophetic like Isaiah? Is it, um, is it wisdom literature like uh, Job? Is it um, poetical like Psalms? Is it a letter like um, Romans? Is it you know a, a, a gospel like uh, Matthew? You know, there's all these different things that it could... Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. It could be. Um, and you have to take these things into account. What's wrong, buddy? You have to take these things into account. Um, so that takes us to um, the singing thing there. So w what style of, of writing is will, <laughs> will change... Will change how you understand it. But then also, the context... Um, for instance, a lot of cults will do this. They'll ignore what the context is around a verse. You know, if, if you're not understanding one verse, read what's around the verse, and that'll help explain the verse. Um, uh, scripture wasn't meant to be broken up into segments. In fact, the original writings didn't have verses separating them, didn't have chapters separating them. It had um, a, a long line of text. And so when you read a book, understand that that's exactly the, the way you should go to it. You shouldn't look at the next chapter as a new thought, necessarily, as a continuation. Except for, like, let's say, Isaiah, where it's a series of prophecies. In which case, there may still be order to that, um, but um, read the prophecies um, the prophecy, like let's say chapter 1 is a prophecy and chapter 2 is a prophecy. Well, they aren't necessarily connected, but you should still read the prophecy itself as a whole um, rather than just separating verses. Uh, but then also another thing is when you go to study the word, 
combine it with prayer. You know, once again, the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible. So how much more should we depend on the Holy Spirit to guide our Bible study? You know, um, prayer before before studying the Bible can make um, your study time very effective. Um, so let's talk about prayer just real briefly. Um, prayer is basically communication with God. Um, I know people make this way too complicated. That you don't need a class teaching you how to pray. Um, you don't need to repeat some some line. You don't need to memorize something. It's just something, simply something where you're seeking after the Lord, and in prayer, God changes us, and then sometimes He changes the situation. Um, but God uses prayer a lot to change us. Um, and another thing to remember, as James tells us, is if we don't ask. God won't answer. There are some things, like for instance, the parable of the persistent, um, uh, the woman who, who who kept going to the judge, or the neighbor who kept going for his to his neighbor for bread. Persistency in prayer, not just praying and then giving up, but something that where you where you where you have the mentality, I'm in this for the long call. I'm going to keep asking the Lord um, until my perspective changes and I understand that I don't need it, or until uh, God answers or whatever. Just having that perseverance, not stubbornness per se, but perseverance. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, if we don't ask of God, we, he, he won't answer us those things. Um, uh, also, remember that um, sometimes uh, if, it, if it's not God's will, God won't answer per se. Sometimes he will answer in, like, for instance, with Balaam, uh, and I think it's like Numbers or something like that, uh, where he asks God and, and, and God, you know, tells him to go and then is mad, with, mad at him for going. You know, sometimes... Um, God will give us something that's not necessarily His will um, um, through, through through prayer and stuff, and, and we'll come to understand why God didn't want us to have it. Um, um, but then also sometimes God will ignore our prayers because we are living in sin. For instance, if you come to the Lord with pride in your heart, for instance, if you don't actually believe in God, for instance, um, He won't probably won't answer. He, I mean, he, there obviously is God can do whatever the heck he wants, but I mean, um, as long as it's according to his character. Uh, but um, that is something to consider. Um, if you are uh, mistreating your wife, I, I believe it's in Titus or 1 Timothy, somewhere around there, Paul writes that your prayers could be hindered. Um, and there's something to think about. Um, uh, if you're, you know, being having selfish motives or whatever, James talks about that. Um, but prayer is important. It is probably one of the one of the most important things a Christian can do about a situation. I know nowadays people ha have a very low view of scripture. I mean, of, of prayer as they do of scripture. But um, prayer has, has, is something that, that really does. Um, I don't want to say God, prayer works, but God hears prayers from a righteous person. In fact, James says that the prayer of a righteous person accomplishes much. That's something that, that we shouldn't just pass over lightly. Paul makes a great deal of, of emphasis about um, praying at all times, about the attitude of prayer, and about how important prayer is. Um, so I think when we're honest with the scripture, that prayer is definitely something that, that we need to be doing more of. Um, you know, seek after the Lord with the whole heart, and he will hear you. He's, he's close to those who seek after him. He's close to the humble. He lifts them up. Uh, the, the poor in spirit, he, he's there for. So just remember that. Baby shot. Very hard to walk with a laptop and the baby and recording. But hopefully that just um, kind of encourages you. Um, prayer and reading the Bible is very important. Um, it helps us to understand God's way. It helps us to conform to conform to His His perfect character and uh, just get some space from our our imperfect character. Uh, helps us see with fresh perspectives, same as worship does. You know, these are things that, that, that can't just be ignored in, in the life of a believer. Uh, I hope that uh, this lesson uh, helped you in some way. And uh, please, please, please stay in the Word and stay in prayer. Even if you've read through the whole Bible before, keep reading. Keep reading. Stay in Scripture. Stay in prayer. Um, don't just pass something up. And uh, that's the end of this. That's the end of this video. Um, I will... Post some more probably in a couple weeks, but I'm going on vacation next week, so probably nothing too soon. See ya!